Dr. David Schiller here. In today's post, we're going to be talking about the six major patterns of low thyroid. Those six patterns actually can be divided into about 30 different patterns, which we'll talk about each specifically in, in future posts. But today, I just want to talk about the six major patterns, give you a general uh, feel for what each pattern is, and then we'll move on in subsequent posts to looking at each pattern specifically. So the first pattern that there is, is actually there's actually a primary primary hypothyroidism. In other words, your thyroid is not working very well. In this, uh, in this pattern, it actually could be Hashimoto's, um, which is an autoimmune disease, but the idea is that the actual thyroid is not working very well. The second pattern is one where there's a primary pituitary problem. In other words, the gland that's controlling the thyroid is the issue, and as a result, the, the gland, your thyroid, glands beco become, thyroid gland becomes hypothyroid as a secondary issue. It's subsequent to the fact that the pituitary gland is the issue. This is typically coming from lots of chronic stressors, and there's different ways that that pattern can come about, about uh, three or four ways that, of why that can become a problem, but we'll get, that, get into that when we talk about it specifically. So it's a secondary hypothyroid primary pituitary. The third pattern is what is called thyroid underconversion. In other words, you have different types of hormones that are being released from the thyroid. You have T4 and T3, T4 being inactive, and that's what's mostly made in your thyroid, but it needs to be converted into T3, which is a active form of your thyroid hormone. And typically, the T4 to T3 conversion is not occurring, again, due to most of the time due to different stressors. As a result, you will get the low thyroid symptoms, but it's not because of the thyroid being low, but because it's not converting enough T4 into T3. So that's called thyroid underconversion. The fourth pattern is what is called thyroid overconversion. And in this case, what it means or usually is coming from is you're making too much T3, maybe because you don't have enough of the thyroid binding globulin, which is the taxi calves that brings the hormones around the body. And if you want to know more about that, you can look at another post where I talked about general physiology of the thyroid. We talked about the taxi cabs that bring your thyroid hormones around. And if there's not enough of those, then you can be over-converting into T3. The typical reason why that occurs is because, uh, in, especially in women, is there's too much testosterone. So an increased testosterone is what causes that, and that could be due to a blood sugar issue. So again, you're if by not taking care of that blood sugar issues, which is causing the testosterone in women to rise, you'll never get to the crux of the problem. The fifth pattern is what is called thyroid resistance. And that could be due to, again, to more stress patterns. Too much cortisol or stress hormone can actually cause the thyroid hormones not to, not to be responsive. The cortisol causes thyroid hormones not to cause reactions in the cells. And then the last one is a situation where there's too much thyroid binding globulin. Typically this is coming about in women due to past history of birth control use or women that are on estrogen or progesterone or hormone replacement type therapies, it causes too much of those thyroid binding globulins. So these are the six major patterns, like I said. There's six major ones of, these, of all these six. There's 30 more, or not 30 more, 30 total that can be derived from these six. So as a result, you've got to decide which one you are. And if you're not treating the right pattern, then you're not going to get better, and that's why you're still having the symptoms. So I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next post. Make it a great day.